Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maher Lewis, and today we're going to be discussing uh, revisions. And uh, as you well know, uh, revisions take time. And uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to we're going to show you that uh, doing a revision is as simple as dragging uh, a, a point. And when you drag a point, it affects uh, dynamically all aspects and all objects. And uh, uh, there will not be any need to create uh, new plan production. Um, we'll show that, and uh, here we go. First of all, uh, I'd like to show you this concept of uh, dynamic uh, modeling and the dynamic interaction between um, the pieces of the dynamic civil model. Um, for those of you that want to see it full screen, um, just a reminder, the F5 key, the function 5 key, will give you a full screen view. Um, what we're showing on the screen right now is a uh, dual viewport here, showing a profile on the top and a plan on the, bo on the bottom. And what we'd like to highlight here is in this area of the plan, excuse the sloppy, <laughs> the sloppy marking, I'm, I'm going to readjust the horizontal alignment, and I want you to make focus on the profile to see how everything is going to instantly update. Notice I'm not using any exotic CAD commands or command sequences. I'm simply using glyphs and exposing the glyphs, and as I gently move this horizontal PI, you can witness the change in the curve geometry, and notice that the geometry holds its constraints. As I land that new um, horizontal PI. Notice that the profile is going to update and consequently the finished grade surface is also going to recalculate as a function of redaylighting. So when this recalculates you can see that now I have changed that grade um, and the relationship to the existing ground. Let's take this one next step and let's look at the section and profile, and we'll do the same type of manipulation with the vertical PI. Now, when this uh, dual viewport screen comes up, we'll see that we have the profile that we just adjusted on the top, and I have the section styled in such a way that we can easily see and determine cut and fill based on that styling. Now, granted, I probably wouldn't publish these uh, for my construction documents, but this allows me to instantly see and assess cut and fill conditions. So with the same idea of not using an exotic command sequence and just gently adjusting my VPI and landing at a different location, we can see again how the entire model is going to react and update. And now instantly I can see that perhaps I have a better uh, design as I'm trying to balance my cut and fill. So that is a quick overview of how horizontal and vertical components can react. And now I'd like to uh, visit a comment that Mark said about plans production. Let's close this drawing. So if I zoom in to this image here, this happens to be a, uh, a little clip out of one of Mark's blueprints. And this is showing uh, Mark, one of Mark's typical sections for the Lake St. Louis Boulevard extension and road rehab that, that he just mentioned. So what I'm going to do is uh, replicate this typical section using a robust set of tools in Civil 3D. So here is the start of this Assembly, and I want to visit and show the catalog of assembly. Let's expose those subassembly pieces in the tool palette. And what I'd like to do is we want to finish off our assembly with two subassembly pieces, and we'll visit the Imperial Structures collection, and I'm going to visit the urban sidewalk. Now, so let's go back to the urban sidewalk. We can see that we have um, on the right-hand panel, we have the properties for that. I'm going to make sure that we're on the right side. 
and we're going to in indicate the inside boulevard or the inside lawn or sod area, and let's call that two feet. And the actual sidewalk width itself, let's give that a six foot width. And then the outside lawn area or boulevard area, we'll do three and a half feet. And let's keep the slope at two percent and verify that we are on the right hand side. And then we're going to sneak in here and attach it to the top back of curve. So there we have our sidewalk added to the master assembly. Next, let's visit the daylighting. And we have a great many daylighting tools. And as we'll see here um, from Daylight General, when I visit the health department, uh, we can see lots of different conditions that we're able to comply. Again, we have intelligent interaction with the things that we tie to in this case, how we're going to daylight to our surface. So if I slide down, we can see, again, quite a healthy list of defaults and explanations of the defaults. If I come all the way to the bottom, um, we have uh, perhaps a little clearer diagram of what's going to happen in cut conditions and uh, two types of slope conditions, a steep slope and a medium or regular slope. So with that said, I'm going to add daylighting, and I am going to keep the default. I'm going to verify that I am on the correct side, the right side, and zoom in here and connect the daylighting. So now what we have is our completed assembly. And the next thing that we need to verify is we need to create the corridor. And to create a corridor, very simply, from the corridor pull down, I go to create a corridor. We know that a corridor has to run along an alignment, so it's going to ask me to choose a horizontal alignment. It's going to ask me to choose a vertical alignment, and then, of course, ask me which corridor that I wish to run along that range. Now, we have the ability to add different ranges or regions, and in this case, I'm just going to run that corridor along the region that I've um, specified in my horizontal. I'm going to reset my frequency to place the uh, assembly, in this case 50 along the tangents and 20, every 25 feet along the curves. And then most importantly, I'm going to set the targets. Now, setting the targets allows me to daylight to, in this case, the existing surface. So when I go ahead and do that and click OK, we're going to see in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you can see the work that's being done to generate that corridor. So if I visit my Prospector tab, we can see that a corridor object has indeed been built, and we'll go ahead and zoom to that corridor object. So the corridor object has daylighted, and to take a look at it, this is what a corridor object looks like in 2D. If we elect to show it in 3D, and several 3D objects do appear differently in 3D than they do in 2D, and so we have the ability to do a visual analysis quite quickly, and oftentimes the visual analysis will show, will indicate where we have a problem. Mark indicated that the surveyors found a bust uh, in one of the points from their survey and they were able to go in and isolate that quite quickly from visual inspection or from realizing, I think he believed, he, at, at least he said the, uh, the limb elevations were, were off on something and that was a sh an indicator. Here is a 3D view of the assembly being placed at increments along the, the main baseline. And we can see, very interesting, on the left-hand side where I have the retaining wall, the retaining wall, you can actually see the height of the retaining wall change as a function of its interaction with the uh, surface, the target surface that it's daylighting on. We can see the travel lanes, the left travel lane, the right travel lane, the median strip, and we can also see the sidewalk on either side. 